Hello and welcome back to Franklin Covey's twice weekly podcast, now the world's largest weekly leadership podcast, airing and releasing on Tuesdays and Fridays, both audio and video, where I am your host on Leadership with Scott Miller now in its fifth year with 300 plus podcast interviews where we have the honor and privilege each week to bring to you different perspectives on how to be an effective human, how to be a better leader, how to be more productive, more healthy, balance your work and your personal lives that are now often one and the same. For those of you that are formal leaders inside organizations, each week, twice each week, we try to bring you tangible, practical tips on how to be a better leader, how to build a better culture. And for those of you who are perhaps informal leaders or you're a leader in your house, we also try to bring you great personal pieces of advice on how to extend your longevity and to improve your health. And it's with that point of view in mind that I'm enormously honored to introduce today's guest. Now, before I do that, I wanna share a very brief story about him. He was scheduled to be on this podcast about two months ago. And due to circumstances outside his control, he was caught in traffic in the Netherlands where he lives. And I will tell you, we interview a lot of famous celebrities, best-selling authors, business titans, people with big egos on this podcast. But this gentleman, not only did he dial in to tell us that he was going to be late because of the traffic and could we delay, he actually offered to host the podcast from his car stuck in traffic outside of Amsterdam. We declined, but here he is today live, ready to roll in his home. His name is Wim Hof. You know him as the 26 Guinness World Record holder. He's known colloquially as the Ice Man, and his New York Times bestseller is called The Wim Hof Method, Activate Your Full Human Potential. From his home in the Netherlands, Wim Hof, welcome to On Leadership. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Great to see you, Wim. You are... Uh, you have a cult following around the world of people that are trying to build more mindful lives, that are meditating, that are building uh, practices around their physical, mental, emotional health. You are a, um, a well-known speaker, coach, author. Your book, The Wim Hof Method, has been purchased by, my sense is, probably millions because you're a household name here in the U.S. Wim, would you talk a little bit about why you wrote this book, and the impact you feel it's having on people around the world, the Wim Hof Method. Mm, yes, the Wim Hof Method is very compact. It is the, uh, it's my story. It shows that a person who is a, a simple person, a, a normal one, uh, but through the valleys and, uh, and summits of life, emotionally, uh, scattered like a matchbox in the ocean, suddenly gets a grip. He gets a grip and he starts doing things. He starts an itinerary. And that itinerary uh, leads him to do lots of world records. Because he gets this grip, this focus, and this connection with this body, he's able to do things never been done and nor considered to be done by humans. And that caught the attention of scientists. And scientists began to take it up to uh, experiment on me, and then they, show, uh, then they saw uh, the problems they were having in science, in a human physiology, called, say, inflammation. And inflammation is big. It's also big money, big industry, because we have no control over inflammation. And now this guy, that's me, uh, showed in a competitive study, he showed how to bring down inflammation. Never been shown in science before. Unprecedented. Suddenly there, boom. So, because that is... So much, it's so fundamental that it changed our uh, knowledge of what we as humans, all of us, are able to do within our physiology. So that changed and that needed to be covered in a book. And so there is the Wim Hof Method. And now it is translated, say, in 50 languages. 
And that's only because this book makes sense. It's a normal guy, simple guy, with a great faith that we are able to do more than we think. And he shows it. And then he shows it by sharing it with others in a competitive study. And therein, all these people within just a couple of days are suddenly able to influence deeply into the autonomic nervous system and innate immune system, bringing down inflammation after an injection of an E. coli bacteria part, which causes this fever, uncontrolled shivering, pain, all over agony, vomiting, nausea, all that for three to six hours. It's a controlled experiment in the world just to find out what way could we influence into our physiology to bring down inflammation, which is the cause and effect of any disease. Is there a way? That's what I showed in 2014 with a group of people. First, I showed it, me, myself, but I am just an S1. Just one is not scientific proof. But if you get 18 people compared to 18 others, and the 18 others, they don't, they become sick. And my, uh, the people who follow this method, the Wim Hof method, called, uh, then suddenly they are 100% able to bring down inflammation caused by the injection of a bacteria into the veins. And that has been revolutionary. Never been shown. So I'm still keeping on going with all the science. But back then, this book needed to be made to bring it out. And in the whole wide world, even in Thailand, in, in possibly in Russia, in, in, uh, in, in, in Vietnam, I mean, the most unknown uh, countries who take up Western books, they t are taking it up. Because this man, a Western man, is able to get into the Eastern mind because of something universal, something that can be done by every person in the world more than in science was thought possible to do by humans. It's there. And it's, uh, uh, another thing is it's also my story, my personal story. It's woven. One thing is with the other. Makes it human. So that's the origin of this book. Thank you, Wim, for sharing us on that journey. I think it's interesting to note that you've been a very disciplined person your entire life. For five years as a young boy, you rose at 3.30 every morning, your father and your twin brother, and you had a paper route in, in uh, just outside of uh, uh, the uh, German area that Sit borders, that borders yeah. uh, Netherlands. And really? every day yeah. you rode your bicycle with um, hundreds oh, of yeah. pounds of newspapers. Saturday was harder because of how thick it was. And you built this endurance. Yeah. And I believe it's true that one of the 26 world records you hold, we'll talk about the breathing and the cold effect, was that, am I right that you held your breath for five minutes at one point? Yeah, uh, 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 five to seven minutes. Uh, uh, but th this is my practice. Huh? And I was challenged by Guinness World Record, Discovery Channel, National Geographic, in all kinds of adventures. So climbing up uh, Mount Everest, going uh, sw to swim under the ice, which I never had done before, but I was a very learned person in uh, how to control my physiology. I run marathons in the desert, both in the desert and beyond the polar circle. I hang by one finger, this finger, uh, between two hot air balloons in the middle of winter at a mile up, like this, and uh, things like that I did. And that caught the, uh, the attention of uh, scientists. And then they started to experiment on me. And then they saw me doing things never been shown before in uh, physiological science or science 
of physiology. And then they got into this bacteria. And now the, the consequences of what I have been doing, because it was, all was part of a soul search. I was also very disciplined. I was so disciplined with my newspaper uh, distribution every morning as a 12-year-old uh, at 4 o'clock out just before school and then ride my bicycle full of newspapers in the back in a hilly country and your legs become really strong and your lungs become really strong because you got to go up and you got to stop in the middle of the hill and you got to keep on going to the top because there's one over there and there and there and you go everywhere. There's nobody in the street. It is a real spiritual experience. I think I got it from there. And I became so strong in cycling because of carrying all the weight all the time everywhere uh, that I, uh, I remember I won in a, in a contest with cyclists. I was the best in one kilometer to cycle one kilometer for the fastest. Like 60 kilometers an hour I went, like 40 miles or 45 miles. Uh, and I, uh, for, for that one minute, and I beat all the cyclists that at the age of uh, fi- fifteen years old. So that 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 feeling of being disciplined or having power over distance with the bike made me go with the bike to the south of Spain instead of with the car or with an aeroplane. I went for thousands of kilometers in my free time uh, with a bicycle, a normal bicycle, not a not a fancy one with all uh, all these accelerations and stuff and all. No, an old second-hand city bike. And I put my bags of the newspapers. Uh, I put my uh, 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 sleeping bag in, some food in, and off we went. Me and my uh, twin brother. And we went all the way uh, almost to Africa, uh, just on the bikes. And we did it several times. That is power. You know, you get power in the legs beyond what is normally thought, uh, uh, you know, what people normally do. But that brings me to that thing. I was in the soul search. I always had that. And I had that from the beginning of my uh, birth, of my existence. My mother never knew there was a second baby. I was the second baby. I was one of the twins. But they uh, didn't know back then that there were twins. There was only one thought coming. And I came afterwards, but almost too late. And I was born in the cold of the hall, almost suffocated. And that must have had a traumatic uh, uh, imprint uh, upon me that made me Look for something out there, actually, in here. And that, uh, uh, that's why I felt so good to go out of my comfort. And that uh, with uh, cycling in the Netherlands in the winter, when it is wet and it's cold uh, and, and you keep on going, you have to have the dexterity in the fingers. That makes you strong. That makes this connection to your body so strong. And all before school, every day. Four years, five years. That is like extensive military training. And, uh, and, and that's what it is. I beat the military. I beat them all. Yeah, uh, uh, why? Because I love to go out my comfort. I knew how to do that. And that brought me into this feeling attracted one day to go into icy water. And uh, I just saw that. And, uh, and back then, it was considered to be crazy to go in. But I went in, and I felt great. At that moment, I felt, this is it. This is this connection. This brought me back to my birth trauma, my traumatic birth. And that felt good. Do I did not know back then what it meant, but it felt good. I had, I must have had that experience before, but now I controlled it, the cold. And what you do when you go into the cold water is you wake up 
with more energy, more uh, uh, oxygen inside, because the body needs to become more strong from the inside to oppose the power of the cold upon. You gotta look, and that's what I learned. I learned to breathe in a way that I was able to oppose to uh, the the, uh, the impact of whatever was going on, and then I, suddenly I could uh, module it. I could uh, uh, use it for exercise, like hundred push-ups in 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 one breath. Can you imagine how strong, how much control? So it actually hasn't got to do with strength too much. It's more the control of the breath inside. Because when you are not acidic, then there is oxygen inside the body, and then you are able to keep on going. But when you are acidic, sore, that is, you cannot run anywhere. You can't do anything anymore. I was able to control the pH levels inside the body. And if I go to leadership and all, le to be a leader out there, you should be able to be a leader in here. And that is to learn to control your biochemistry. And that is to go learn to control what is stress. And stress is the big obstructor for anybody to execute its or her uh, tasks in the world. So a leader therein is a person who is able to control stress, not to accumulate to levels where it interferes with the performance. And that is possible. I found that out. Together with the universities, and, uh, 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 I'm doing six studies right now with different universities all over the world, and uh, it's catching up. It's catching up this breathing. Breathing, because the profanity of our breathing caused by wearing clothes and uh, being destimulated, living in a comfort zone, following our thoughts, not necessarily the necessary stimulation of our internal organs, our deeper being, uh, uh, it's just not there because we follow what we think is nice for us. That is not necessarily good for us. Because stress will come. And when stress then comes, you are not strong enough to oppose the stress. And it will interfere with your tasks. So uh, I'm doing a study right now with 540 people in Queensland, Australia. And it shows that if people go into icy baths, their quality of life goes up. Their performance task uh, facility goes way up. Uh, their mood goes up. And it's logical because this, they learn how to deal with the stress. So when stress is coming, we are able and going into an ice bath is if you don't go to the cold, then the cold will come to you. That's what I always say. If you don't go to the stress, the stress will come to you. So what I teach is go voluntarily to a, a short, stressful situation and you learn to handle cognitively like neurologically with the stress uh, your will with the stress mechanisms in the deep mid brain and then when stress comes you are able with your will to activate the stress mechanisms to oppose the stress outside so that's the story and, and that's where it goes. It is good. The next thing uh, start, I'm thinking about the shootings in, uh, in America. Hey, guns and fun. But if the people have no control over their mood, then disasters can happen. And uh, what happens in schools is that there is too much stress, too much competition, too much pestering resulting in... Uh, uh, because you cannot deal with your mood, with the situation. And people need to perform. So stress will come in. And that uh, accumulates to a level where they cannot handle the stress anymore. And they still have to compete. They still have to perform. They still have to have control over their mood. They are not able to do that. Some people just 
snap. And then they take a gun and they uh, do not even understand, feel the, the, the other person. And we're not their friends, not their parents. They're the loss of their identity. And this is a common problem in our society, depression and having no control over our mood. This breathing and the cold learns you to go into the mechanisms of that what controls stress. So when, you, when the stress is lower, you keep your sense together. It's natural. But when the stress is too much and you have no control, it takes over, it makes you crazy, or you, get dep- or you get depressed, or you get very angry. One of the two. But this, go into the cold, and man, when you go into the cold, you learn to control your mood, because you bring it down. Before you go in, you bring it down. You know the cold is stronger than you. So you just let it go. You just go to the depth of your body. You oh, let it go. And then suddenly, within a minute, the body is able to adapt to that external force called the cold from within. But if we are interfering, so oh, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> then it's not adapting. Then you are messing with the uh, ad- adaptive forces uh, in the brain and uh, related to the body. And then it's a horrible. But learn to go control from cold showers, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45, up till two minutes. And then you're ready to go into icy water. Learning to bring down your psyche. It's learning to control your mood. And breathing... Deep breathing exercises, well done. On a yoga mat, in bed, or in the sofa, will take away any stress, anxiety. And for any person who wants to be a leader, goes into performance, into speeches, like I do all the time, I just breathe before. I clear my head, literally, of brain waste, brain waste clearance through breathing, and you will have the best speech ever, because there is no obstructive element left in your body. Wim, there we are. Wim, you are, that was beautifully said and riveting, you are well known around the world colloquially as the Iceman. You spend a lot of time talking about breath and meditation, mindfulness, the science behind high performance. What I'd like to do is spend the remaining part of our time having you perhaps teach us, we know the value now, but the process of of safe, controlled, shock-free practices for using cold water to enhance your cardiovascular system. All over the internet, TikTok and YouTube and Instagram, there are videos of people doing these cold plunges. People have these portable baths at their house. Would you spend a couple of minutes, I want to save some time for breath as well, will you talk about how someone starts? Like this morning, I was thinking of you in the shower, because you said you could start with like the last minute or so of a cold movement from a warm to a colder shower. Will you be prescriptive on how does someone start? Yes. You start uh, first with mentalizing. You say to yourself, I want to learn how to exercise uh, my cardiovascular system, uh, 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 by the way, the cardiovascular system related diseases is killer number one in our society. It's time we learn to exercise the cardiovascular system condition. And that is not difficult. You go determined, you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to start. And we have a natural capacity to go at least for after a warm shower, say for 15 seconds into a cold shower. Anybody can do it. Like 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, you guys are all young. You can easily do that. And this is the best. We have to, uh, 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 let's tackle this serial killer called uh, cardiovascular related uh, diseases, millions in the West every year. Who's talking about this? Where is the cardiovascular exercise? It's not difficult. 15 seconds one day, 30 seconds the other day. 
45, one minute, one minute and uh, uh, 15, 130, 145, two minutes. Always poised with your psych determined. I'm taking the cold shower. The body is very well equipped to adapt to that cold. And with that, the cardiovascular system within eight days is very able to uh, stay for two minutes uh, with a, a, in a cold shower. You get so much more energy. You bring down your heart rate. You bring down your blood pressure. It's all there. It's very addictive. It's positively addictive because you, so, you feel so much better. It's the best investment. As an entrepreneur, think of, is it good for me? In uh, money wise, hey man, health is the best thing you can invest into. Because when you are healthy and full of energy, then you are the best businessman you can ever imagine to be. So do it. Eight days it takes to get to one, uh, two minutes of uh, a cold shower. And then you are ready for icy water for two minutes. Once you go stand in front of an ice bath, once again, you psych up in your stuff. I stay cool. I bring down my psych. Your long breath in, long out. Fully in, long out. And then you go in. And you keep on with that pattern. Not hyperventilating. That's no good. No good. Long, deep breath, long exhale. And then you slowly but surely reminding yourself and focusing on that pattern of breathing. You go down until you are here. And of course, cold is cold. But your body is suddenly remembering all its cardiovascular condition, which is oh, more than, uh, it's like 80,000 miles inside endothelium, millions of little muscles. They are all awakened and they make your body strong. The adrenal axis spikes and you become the strongest version of yourself within a minute. And then suddenly you feel that you are like, Hey, the cold is bearable. And that is because from the inside, the power is on. And all the veins, all the arteries, all the capillaries, they are all oxidized. And this is the way we can tackle cardiovascular killer number one in our Western society. That besides of all the energy it's going to get. It's going to be addictive because so much dopamine will be released while doing it. 250% more dopamine, 540% more noradrenaline. And you know what adrenaline does? Eh? You go like cocaine, man, but it is high on your own supply. You will be unstoppable like a force of nature. That is the ice bath. Enjoy that one. Do it. We got all the free tutorials on that. It's all for free day. Do the basics. It's amazing how it works. Then we have the breathing. Uh, literally, I learned to breathe deeper, slowly and deep when I go into the icy water. Why? Because then the body is able to adapt to the power outside and become stronger inside. Not by hyperventilating, no. But this breathing uh, you can do on a sofa, never in water actually, uh, not like for swimming and free diving and laps under the water. That is different stuff. This is nothing to do with that. That is, if you want to learn that, you go to a free diving school you go to swimming pools and whatever, competition. This is learning how to get the best out of yourself.
learning how to control your biochemistry. So stress causes biochemical residue in the body and in the brain that will interfere with our performance. So once we start on a sofa, safe environment, uh, or in a bed, or anywhere we, where you could faint but nothing happens, uh, this is a rare occasion that you faint, because these uh, exercises are uh, really going deep. They involve your full biochemistry. Once you do it, it's quite amazing what you can do within a half hour. It's amazing. We saw all the signs. We saw the brain scans. It's amazing. But you have to use it well. At home, in bed, or on a sofa. Not in a car, not in a swimming pool, or anywhere else where once you lose the control, you don't know where, etc. Et it's too dangerous. It's lethal. can be deadly. That strong are these breathing techniques we found. And that's where a bacteria suddenly has no chance anymore to get into our immune system and deregulate it. So <clears throat> if you feel stressed, you didn't sleep well, you have to perform do this breathing. We got it all for free on the Wim Hof Method uh, website. It's all there for free. And uh, uh, just do it. These basics they have shown and they have actually changed the foundation of what we think in science that humans are able to do within themselves. So that powerful. It should have gotten so much more attention in the world. I'm, I'm kind of famous and all, and it's a house brand, etc. But the science should have, it's still catching up. This is such a shift in humanity wherein we can uh, regain a control over our comfort zone behavior, weakening our constitution uh, both uh, mentally and physically. That, yes, amen, it takes time apparently, for the world to catch up with this. But this is the future. Do the breathing. It's like fur, fur, on a sofa, in bed, controlled. Well, if you feel sluggish in your entrepreneurship, well, working, 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 then, hey, cool down. Be on the sofa. Do this. Thirty times. And then the last breath, fully in, you let it go, and you stop. So that means empty lungs. Empty lungs, and you stay for one minute without air in the lungs. And you will see you are very able to do that because you brought down carbon dioxide. That's a breathing trigger. And relax on the uh, sofa. After one minute and one and a half minutes, uh, the body shoots adrenaline throughout the body and resets the body, and anything that should not be in the body is being expelled. And that is biochemical stressful residue in the brain, brain waste. So you do that three, four rounds in the afternoon when you're sluggish in your brain and when you work and all. And you will find you are fresh like a chicken again. Wim, our time is ending. I'd like to spend a minute or two having you address our mindsets, the way we can actually build you know, healthy uh, sensory awareness. Any one or two particular tips, independent of our breathing and cold exposure of how people can build a more healthy mindset. Yes. So our breathing has become so profane, and with that, uh, the, our capacity to think, our cerebral activity has gone down. And logically, we are not able to experience full potential of our brain, which is the mind, the seed of the mind. And now we found if you do the breathing, then suddenly your will is able to access in many more brain areas. 
So before you do anything with performance, and there is pressure, and you have to be sharp, and all, if you want to have more brain capacity at will, in control, do the breathing before. Then the natural ability for our will to enter into uh, the rest of our brain, and this is what we have shown in Hanover, the best brain scans of the world, uh, 100% neural activity at will caused. And with that, we get into brain areas thought of in neurology, neuroscience, impossible for humans to enter. And now it's there. And it just needed to get rid of the brain waste inside uh, uh, our head, our brain, by which we naturally, the natural tendency of our will should be able, and don't you think it is logical, uh, to enter into any part of our brain at will. But because of our lifestyles, profanity of breathing, a profane way of uh, uh, breathing, I mean, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, comfort zone behavior makes us weak and our cerebral activity then lowers. So, know that a mindset is only possible to be set if the breathing is righteously done when the uh, that what makes change chemically take away the obstructions the chemical residues in the brain and then your performance and you can test it out anytime for anybody that you will be able to perform so much better so much sharper so much lighter just by a breathing before you go do something. Because our natural way to deal with the world is to be light and to be goal-getting and to make it all manifest. That's the natural way of our mind. Only we obstructed the mind. We made it, yeah, inaccessible, uncontrollable. And then you get in a limited control and you learn to compromise and all. And I say, put it away, get back into your natural capacity. And that is able to do what you wish it to do for the good. Wim, you're known worldwide as the Iceman. And with that comes the brand of being tenacious and determined and disciplined and fierce even. But I can't help but notice there's also a softer, calmer side to you. Behind you are some paintings that I can't help but recognize. Would you, for those that are watching us around the world, would you swivel your chair and talk about those paintings that are behind you in your home in the Netherlands? Uh, yeah, see that? Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I get them. So to our listeners and viewers, Wim has gone back into his bunker-like home outside of the Netherlands. And he's now bringing over two five-foot-high paintings that look like Africa and maybe the yeah. Sonoma yeah. Desert or something. Like this one, Africa. Africa. And this is uh, my version of Utah. Your version of Utah. Very accurate, sir. So you are a painter. You know, I just make them out of my head in one day. I used to climb rocks like this. Do you hear me? Yes, what you're showing us is very much right. a Utah landscape in southern Utah. Yeah. Yeah, you see? Inspired by Utah. The, the sun is coming. This is in the morning. The sun. The other ones are still in the shadow of these big rocks. But there, I used to climb uh, this without gear. Wim, do you use painting as um, a relaxation technique, as an escape, as inspiration, why do you paint? Yes, yeah. to, together with, uh, yeah, pa painting, making music, uh, yeah, creativity. Uh, I love it, the gardening, amazing. I love gardening and, uh, yeah, and nature in general. Yes, that is an uh, absolute way of... Uh, but I always say, uh, when I paint, is the only time I'm not thinking about sex. 
It's such a relationship I have there. I'm not thinking anymore. I'm just indicating. So I use the so sex as a metaphor. You have just crushed the painting industry because people would rather think about sex than paint. Uh, Wim Hof, your book is The Wim Hof Method, Activate Your Full Human Potential. I have been riveted in this 40-minute interview. You are a class act. Thank you for joining us today, Wim. I have thoroughly enjoyed listening to you, especially the segment about leadership and controlling the stress and emotions that come your way. You cannot lead others until you lead yourself. Wim Hof, thank you today for your time. Thanks, Scott. And we'll see you back here, here next week for a new conversation on leadership.